Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are going to have a lot of fun. I have one of my all-time favorite guests here. We have Linda Howell, and she's going to be talking about her newest book, Discover Your Soul's Path Through the Akashic Records. And uh, I just said to Linda at the very beginning, I said, this has just opened up a can of whoop um, arse (laughs) 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 on my life, but I love it. It does everything that you promise, clarity, compassion, all the kind of things that you can get from the Akashic Records. So I love it. Thank you for putting this book together. And thank you for being here. Well, thank you. I'm just delighted to be here. I love to be with you. We always have so much fun. We do have fun. You know, we do. And and it's, uh, you know, and I'm really excited um, to, to talk about my new book and, and really to you know, introduce some of these ideas and make new yeah. possibilities available to people. Now, let's do, do do a little bit of intro for people who may not be familiar with the Akasha and the Akashic Records. Can you do a really brief introduction on what are those things for people who are not familiar? <laughs> okay, okay. Now, I know it sounds very esoteric, mm-hmm. um, and it really is. Yeah, it is. However, it is. That's true. That's true. But what's all, okay, so here's what it is. The um, Akasha is a Sanskrit word, Mm -hmm. and what it means is primary substance. It's that from which all things are formed. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about. The Akashic, okay, so we have that, and then Mm -hmm. the Akashic record is a vibrational archive of every soul and their journey. So Mm -hmm. it's an energetic treasury, if you will, that Mm -hmm. includes all of us, every soul that's ever been. Mm-hmm. And every set of records, like your records, my records, everyone's records has two parts. Mm-hmm. The first part is fixed. It's it's like the um, it's like the blueprint of your soul. Mm-hmm. Okay, it really is the the etching of your divine potential. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's, that's like from the moment of the inception of the soul all through time. That doesn't change. It doesn't change. Okay, give me no. an example of, so does this mean like CJ is always going to be a what from lifetime to lifetime? It's going to be fixed. Okay, what's fixed is who is who you who you are at the level of essence okay right so who you are at the level of essence there's a a felt we all have this right Mm -hmm. there is a felt sense of who you are Mm -hmm. and like in your case you're very effervescent and you're alive you're generous and you're very expressive no but you know this you're like the champagne of the soul (laughs) thank you you know that but it's true you're like yes yeah. You're like a resounding yes to life. <laughs> That's in your soul essence. That is, and, and what's happened is that that will be consistent through time. Now, it is not always huh. consistently expressed. Ah. Ah. And this is where we get what I have come to know as the chronicles of you. So there would mm. be like the chronicles of CJ. And it would be... Um, the different identities, the stories of the lifetimes you live, assuming different identities and experiences as you awaken to the truth of who you are, and then you live it. Uh, okay, so let me see if I get this right. So the fixed part is my essence. So yes. that's going to stay the same. CJ 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and all the way out to N is going to stay the same. It's kind of the right. effervescent, bubbly. Now, whether I express that in that in a particular lifetime, like maybe I come as an, uh, a Swedish man or a, a bookshelf. Like I assume like I can come in to be assessing as humans. Puppy dogs. No, 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 no. Okay, great point, great point. What we're looking at is the um, the record of the soul in its human incarnations, in okay. its human expressions. Okay. Okay, that's really what we're addressing here. Okay, okay, so there's a fixed piece, and then there's a part that every time, like I live a life, you know, whatever, the first life I may live as a primitive cave woman, and that is recorded in the record. Second life, I may come as a pilgrim man with blonde hair and blue eyes. That's recorded in the record. And whatever yes. happens during that life is, but is my... Is the soul trajectory, like the essence, like you said, the qualities of effervescent, bubbly, whatever, that stays 
the same? And is my mission the same each year, uh, each okay. lifetime? Okay. Now, this is very interesting because at the level of mission, I don't know, mission's a tricky word. Yeah. I would say at, um, there are some absolute soul purposes that we all share. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the purposes are things like at some point we will all fall in love with ourselves. Mm -hmm. We will come to love ourselves. We will come to really recognize that our souls are perfect mm -hmm. and whole and complete. And then we're going to notice it about one another. And mm -hmm. ultimately, we will really get it. Mm -hmm. Not just as an idea, but experientially. The, the goodness of life will be very mm -hmm. real to us. The goodness of life on earth. Because, you know, really, CJ, we step out of these bodies and it's, Party. Right. I mean, we're, right. <laughs> we haven't been to a few parties in these right. outfits, right? Yes. But seriously, it's like there's a, you know, we all know there's that sense of like, oh, freedom, unlimited expression and all this when we're not in body. Mm. And from an Akashic perspective, the journey of the soul through time and space as human. Right. In a human is, body. In human Incarnated form, in a human in form. In human form is to come to know and love ourselves as is. Mm, you know, it's so funny. I was, I was talking to my girlfriend about this book and she said, and I said, I, I feel like this lifetime is really about understanding love and compassion like for me and she said isn't every lifetime about that and I guess like you're, what you were saying is yes every lifetime is about self-love loving others love but does it have different and I said but I think what happens is it has different expressions in different absolutely. ways absolutely it has different expressions but not a, absolutely but I have to like when I look at let's look over let's just consider the last 5,000 years you're right but see what we notice is that this idea of unconditional self-love mm -hmm. this is a new idea you know mm. our ancestors weren't like let me love myself I mean my <laughs> ancestors weren't they were like oh no you know here we go again another right. life you know these were people see see we are humanity is evolving we're waking up to the truth that we are good. I mean, mm. we've spent centuries upon centuries and ages really convinced that we weren't so good. Right. Um, that, right, that there's something wrong with us, that we right. made up all these religions to mirror back to us that we don't think very much of ourselves. You know, all of this, the idea that we can enjoy who we are. This right. is a radical idea. Ah, this right. is in the last, I mean, this is why do we think we call it the new age? Because we have some new ideas uh, that, that certainly our parents, I mean, yes, our parents are like, yes, I want you to be happy. Right. But you know, not too happy. Right. I mean, if your parents are like, mine, it's like, I want you to be happy, but more important, be good. Yeah. I mean, what's that, right? No wonder we're all upset. So, yeah. Because generationally, we are here to really wake up to mm. this new possibility. First, that we are fundamentally good, mm. even when we act like jerks. Right. <laughs> Which, you know, right. everyone, right? We've all had our moments. Yes. And it's okay. But that, that, that our behavior, there's a level of appearance, right? Mm -hmm. That our behavior does not determine our our ultimate worth. Right. So you're saying that the what we what we our mission and what we're kind of striving for changes because we're changing as a society, as people, as cultures, we're all changing. So all that kind of is added into the mix. I mean, there's CJ 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. I may be striving and changing my own self, but then there's this bigger macrocosm around us that's changing too. And so there's yes. lots of different variables that are happening. Yes, because we are actually operating as a unit. Humanity is a unit, right? Mm -hmm. We are one soul and we are one humanity. Right. Okay? Yes. And so we're, so this is what's, this is what's under. Yeah, we're all one. We're all one. So all it's one. like, yeah, so I can't be like, CJ's evolving, but I don't know about you. you know? <laughs> no, 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 no. Everybody, see, I, we, you know, do not be fooled by appearances. Right. Just because someone's sitting on the couch watching reality TV doesn't mean anything. It right. means that's, see, because the question from an Akashic, it's really true, right? From an Akashic perspective, here's the question. 
how do I love myself? Mm. Can I love myself when I'm watching reality television eating junk food? Can I love myself when I'm completely unconscious? Can I love myself when I am a philanthropist? Can I love myself when I'm a great healer? Can I love myself when I'm a, you know, a oh, wonderful right. king? Right. Right. This is the challenge to come to know and love ourselves as we are known and loved by the divine. Mm, mm. Okay. So let's go into, I, I'm shocked because I read your book and we're talking to Linda Howell about her book, <laughs> Discover Your Soul's Path Through the Akashic Records, uh, taking your life from ordinary to extraordinary. And I'm kind of shocked at the number of things you can use the Akashic Record for. I, it's almost like my, my imagination is limited until I read one of your books or I talk to you. Like you were said, I think the last time we spoke, the very first time we spoke, you said, you can actually check the Akashic Records for your house to see, you know, is, is it a good land? What's happened to it? I mean, there's infinite amounts of possibilities. So, I mean, what is there? I mean, what do people generally use Akashic Records to find out? Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, I want to say like 800 things to comment <laughs> <laughs> because I'm an infinite being. Okay. Yeah. That's hard. So here's, so here's the idea that... The more we understand the record, that this is a spiritual resource. It's an infinite spiritual resource. It is not a psychic oracle. Okay. Okay, so that's our first distinction. Right. Okay, so if what I want is fortune telling, this is lousy. Yeah, well, I get that job that I'm applying for. Should I do this or that? Those are yeah. not good things. Those to check, are so. not good. So we're just going to take those off the table. And what we're going to look at is that this is a realm where the love, the wisdom and the the pulse right of the mm. universe converge mm -hmm. and it's a space within which we can actually take a look and see you know who am I and um, are these you know let's say I'm looking at a job mm -hmm. right the question is what's what are the possibilities for me here will I become more more loving or less loving mm. right is this does this support me or does this you know really wear me out mm. see these are the kinds of things because the idea is not that the records tell us what to do who we are it's a space within which we can safely and and really and safely explore mm -hmm. and then make the choices on our own behalf and so as I understand when I was doing some of these exercises, when you say, will this job make me, you know, is it, is it good for my soul? I mean, you may be able to ask that question. And because it's the history of you, it can look back at every incarnation in which you've done things and say, well, based on the past, you generally have been happy with jobs that, you know, for me that have the sense of adventure, that there's a lot of change. It would give me advice. Now, then I have to decide whether I want to take that job or not. Right. Okay, right. got it. Right. Okay. So you wrote this book because you actually had this desire, as I understand it from your book, to find out how to move from the ordinary to the extraordinary, which as I understand from reading a book was, gosh, I am this beautiful spiritual being and I'm here on this plane of reality and incarnated as a human being. And in my, in my parlance, I think, how can I live heaven on earth? Because this is a wonderful place. We may not see it, but how do we get there? Um, that was at least how I read it, but is that what you meant when you when you wrote the book? That's very good. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, because here's what I here's what I saw in my own journey. Yeah. Right. So, so first I came upon this method called the Akashic Records, the Pathway mm -hmm. Prayer Process. Okay, and it's all about the method, the record itself, how they're organized. Yeah. How to access it. it. Yeah. How to access it. All of that. It's terrific. That is about the record. Mm -hmm. The next piece in my journey was about personal healing, mm -hmm. right? How can I um, live beyond my wounds and my injuries? And how can I stop using all my experiences as weapons against myself? Yes. You know, right? Okay, so now we have all this evidence of why I'm so unworthy, blah, blah. Anyway, so, so the second part yeah. and the second book, Healing Through the Records, was really about, for me, I was, through my own practice, introduced to the, um, the spiritual practice of unconditional self-love, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. which 
just changed my life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So here's what's, so I'm walking around really very deliberately getting on my own side, simply by saying, well, of course, of course, of course you said something silly, and it's all right, honey, no wonder that no matter what I did or didn't do, I was on my side. Mm. Profound spiritual practice. Okay, so at this point I'm thinking, all right, I'm reasonably healed. Let's go <laughs> live in the world, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like, totally get it. It's like live, at, a right? certain, at a certain point, you're like, how much more healing can I do? How much do? but not more ready? So yeah. here's what happens. Yeah. I start going out into my life, mm -hmm. and I have this, uh, like I'm overwhelmed with the awareness that I'm so sensitive, all I want to do is go home and pull the covers over my head. Oh, yeah. And I'm in this awareness like, wait a second, if I'm so spiritual, why am I so incompetent in the world? Why, do I, you know, yeah. see, I did not have a, personally, I did not have a spiritual awakening to go to the mountaintop. Right. I mean, many other lifetimes, we had a wonderful time. Yeah. But, you know, I live in the big city. Yeah. So the question became, and, and I was in this either or. Well, I could either be a person of the world or I could be spiritual. Right. And working in my records, I was like, listen. This is so not working. Right. <laughs> right? But it's yeah. not. It's like, wait, something is terribly wrong. Right. Because, see, I am I'm very down with the idea that we're all one. Mm -hmm. But, see, what I saw in the records is that I, too, am one within myself. Mm -hmm. I am not spiritual and physical. I am a fused unit. Mm -hmm. And my goal was to begin to live live my life from the inside out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yes. And I had no idea how to do that. <laughs> All right, now we're really in trouble. Yes. So, so I did what I do, right? I go into my records, as which I use as a spiritual practice. So you're using the Linda Howe record. Like, you're not using societal's record or no, anything no, bigger. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. That's way too much. Who needs okay. it? <laughs> I, do you know what I'm saying? Right. See, the record is about, you know, we talk about being... The record is the intersecting point of heaven and earth. It is the point at which we stand, right? Mm -hmm. When the soul is right there, right? Mm -hmm. That is what we're dealing with. It's a mm -hmm. soul level dimension of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it's here, it has opened up to secular people like us for the first time in history, if you think about it, it's incredible. Mm -hmm for our illumination because mm -hmm. see the old way like religions they're collapsing they're dropping right. like flies basically right. because because they're not their external ways to have an internal experience right i don't know so right. the record is an internal pathway it is yeah. a bridge from the soul to the source that will hold us steady right. as we grow into the awareness of our oneness mm -hmm. okay okay so I go into my records and I'm like, please help me. Because I, here are the kind of problems I'm having. Right. I would go out into the world. I go and I have this sense people are not understanding me. Mm -hmm. Okay? They're not getting me. Right. And, and I can't make, I'm not making connections with people. You know, I can't find my tribe. I mean, I have all those kinds of issues. Right. And there was an inconsistency, okay? So mm -hmm. I'm not saying I never met my people. I would, but it was inconsistent. Right. And I thought for a long time, of course, I I blamed everyone else. And then it occurred, anyway, I took it to my parents. Yeah, it's so convenient like, to do that. I'm like, hey. Yeah, I love doing I like that. I have a lot of people around me, so there's always yeah. so, Anyway, I'm not. All right, so here's what happened. Uh -huh. I'm in my records, and I, over a period of time, I'm asking What's the issue? What what am I doing? What's in the way? Right? How can I be myself in full integrity, spiritually awake and aware and sensitive mm. and participate in the world? How yes. in heaven's name is I, am I going to do that? So here's what I get. Mm -hmm. I see, you know, at the core of our being is a pillar of infinite light. Mm -hmm. Okay? It starts at the root, extends up through the trunk of the body. I was like resting in this pillar of light and I see some smaller pillars surrounding the pillar that I'm in. Wow. I'd never seen this, right? And I look and I, the way it looked to me is that they were embedded in my pelvic floor. Wow, okay. Okay, extending up through the trunk of the body, out through the ceiling of the heart center. 
oh. really holding me up. Yeah. From the top, it looked like a five-pointed star. Yeah. Oh, cool. Totally cool. I have no idea what any of this means. So, so it's like a it's a vision. So you're going through the Akashic Record, and what you're getting is this vision of this five pillar surrounding, uh, and you say in the book, a triangle and a pillar of light, a pillar of light surrounded by these five points going from your pelvic yes. ear. All That's what you see this while you're texting. This is what I see, and I have yeah. a sense of. Yeah. Right? I have a sense of this. Right. And I'm like, wow, what is this? Okay, mm. and then the real, right, then the exploration begins. Yes. So I was led, so here's what I discovered. I discovered that each pillar corresponds to an idea that is essential for effective living on earth. Mm. Okay? For a spiritual being to be here on earth. For or just any being, person anybody, being. Everybody's spiritual. Right. Everybody is spiritual. We can't not be spiritual. Right. It's, it's an energetic impossibility. Right. So, but this is the point at which our internal and our internal world and our external world, it's like a portal or a gateway, really. Right. Okay. So I go to the first one. Here, here's what they are: incarnation, right. authority, discipline, responsibility, and commitment. And the inner pillar is grace. Now, I want you to know, CJ, I don't like these words. I like <laughs> words like, I don't know, light beam. I mean, right. I just thought this is way too serious for right. me. Right, yes. But I began to do my explorations. So okay. here's what I discover. Yeah. Okay? Incarnation. What I learned was that I, I saw this tremendous amount of confusion that I had. See, I was walking around thinking that I am the wrong person for my soul's purposes. And I'm certainly from the wrong family of origin. Oh, and right. Do you know what I mean? All this. You're like, how did I get Asian how women in Seattle? What happened? I shouldn't be what here. Happened? Yeah, okay, got no, it. No, no, no. And yeah. I should get, you know, I, I shouldn't be from this family. I, right. I, you know, whatever. Right. I, right? I mean, you yes. know, and then I'm doing things like cutting cords, like that's going to do it. I mean, is yeah. that delusional or what? Yeah. I'm cutting cords from my relatives. I'm related to them. <laughs> We're going to be related. No matter right. what I think. Right. Okay? It's the way it is. Right. Nothing wrong with it. So what I began to see was that the judgments that I had about who I am as a person and the conditions in which I find myself are preventing me from really settling in and being effective in the world. That as long as I condemn and reject the circumstances and myself as a person. See, the truth is, I am the best person. This is not an accident. Yeah, this is the perfect incarnation. You, this how your ideal. parents, this is divinely oh, architected. Yes, it should be. Yes. Okay, so I began to get, see, I, the spiritual essence, the spiritual truth of incarnation is, um, you know, it's a spiritual being in physical form. That's all it is. And once I made peace with that, oh, the relief. Okay, so I'm finally here. So I go to the next pillar, <laughs> authority. Right. Again, authority, please. So here's what I see. Right. See, I was really big on this idea that, you know, I was God in the universe or something. I don't right. know what I thought. I was very confused. Well, we're, we're, we're told in spiritual, like, we have an inner God, and then there's, like, a bigger right, right, God. Right. But like, here's whatever. the thing. That's yeah. all great. Here's the thing. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm so, I have to tell you, my confusion, see, I need things to be really clear and simple. Yeah. So here's what I learned with authority. As long as I'm a human being on the planet Earth, there will be authority over me. Mm -hmm. And that authority is the channel through which the perfect power of the author or the source of life finds me. And the great paradox is this, that the perfect power, the perfect force of authority is transmitted through imperfect agents, mm. like our parents. Right. <laughs> Our bosses. Right. Right? Right. I mean, and you know, I have a million stories about, you know, people coming in like, I hate my boss. I've Every job I've been to, I hate my boss. My bosses are so stupid. Well, you know, I'm really sorry, but until you let the boss be the boss, you're stuck with the boss. Right. Right? Yes. So we have to make peace with the fact that the, the bus driver might not have perfect vision. 
Yeah, so this is this reminds me because I had a boss and during my first review, this is my first review at Microsoft, she said, um, I think the thing that you're forgetting is I'm your boss. So what I say actually is going to affect you and how much you get a bonus and all these other things. So like you may not like me and I may sense that you may not like me. <laughs> And that is going to affect you. So it's the making peace that there is always going to be authority, whether you like it or not. For that's like a very like day to day at a boss. But then there's like this higher spiritual entity, the universe, God, whatever. We also have to make peace with that too, from what I read from your book. Yes. Yes. yes, like, yes. Uh, okay. So here's the thing that I got is that while it's true that I may be God in my own universe. Right. I am not the god of the universe. <laughs> yes. And I could sit up all night trying to, you know, change the direction of the the earth. I cannot do that. And what right. would I want to? It's working right. fine. Yes. Right? Yes. This is profound because once once we make peace with this, as I made peace with this, I could move into alignment with the flow of the life force. And okay. I found myself more energized as I'm like See, what's being asked me, you know, the records are governed by these three absolutes. Fear not, judge not, resist not. And mm. judge not, I'm like, oh boy. You know, so I keep having to like set that to the side. These judgments interfere. Anyway, so so this is authority. So that's so authority. Now we've got some, wait, wait, before, some, we go, oh. be, before we go there, can I ask you one quick question about authority? Because I think this is one thing that you hear a lot in spiritual practices. It's like, I'm letting spirit lead. And I'm like, yes, I am too. But I'm not really because I'm fearing and judging <laughs> and, and not and resisting, right? right? This is one of the biggest things that I think most people have because it's like, let spirit lead. You're like, I am. I'm, you know, but I think that this is one of the challenges. What did you learn about so that? Great. I yeah. am so glad you asked this. So here's the thing that I personally had to really wrestle with because mm -hmm. I was raised in a traditional you know, fundamentalist religion that taught that God was mean as can be and right. was keeping score. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a wrathful God. And then really, we are in big trouble. Yeah. Basically, it's all over. Yeah. Then I came into the then I came into the New Age spirituality, and now I had a, a whole board of invisible gods who were right. keeping score. So I thought, <laughs> I, just, I mean, we're dead. Okay. So here's what I learned: <laughs> is that that this power, this presence, is good. It is good, and that it is the same, whatever the force is that's keeping, like, the planets from crashing into each other, okay, this is a good, it, it's a good power, right. right, and that there's nothing to be afraid of, mm -hmm. that it is on my side. Now, given who I am, a skeptical person, mm -hmm. right, I had to really walk with that for a while, mm -hmm. and I like to test things, so I'm like, all right, if there's a loving power of the universe, prove it. <laughs> you know, and so I'm like yes. taking notes because because this is yeah. so contrary right. to my programming. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so we want to look and see. See, when I come to know that this power, whatever I call it, however I understand it, is good, then I can trust it. It is insane to place our trust in a power that that we're scared of. But how did, you, really... how did you prove it to yourself? What was the proof that you needed to know okay, that, that was here's true? Okay, here's the kind of thing I would do. Yeah, I want to do it myself because okay. I, I, I okay, resist. Okay, here's what I would do. Okay, first you get your little notebook. Right? Yeah. No, ta -da, cub reporter. Okay, yes. and I get up in the morning and I'm like, okay, God, if you're there, help me to see you. Mm -hmm. Help me to see you in ways I can really see, mm -hmm. right? Ways that are right. real to me. Then I, you know, the law... One of the great spiritual laws is that which you seek, you will find. Right. So I'm out on the hunt, and I'm looking. I am looking for proof that there is something happening greater than I am that's really much more loving than I am. Okay? Right. Okay, so here's what I begin to notice. I begin to notice people who are happy. I see people being nice to each other for no good reason. Hmm. I see incredible flowers blooming. I see people involved in artistic projects, and I begin to get it that there's something motivating all of us that is much greater than we are, mm. that is really quite beautiful. Mm. But see, I have to make note of this. So when I eat something that tastes wonderful, that I did not initiate. Right. Right? 
right? I'm like, ah, whoever came up with chocolate cake, this was a good thing. <laughs> no, no, but you know, like, see, yes. I need an ordinary life, right? Right. And that's the way that I grew into it. Yeah. So it's like the it's the it's the Einstein question. You have to decide whether you think the universe is friendly or unfriendly. So all those experiences that you had, okay, the universe is friendly. I can jump there, but then the next is, okay, actually following it. If the universe is friendly and you're getting guidance from the universe, how can you, you know, there's a part of me that resists following the advice of the universe regardless. Well, let's see, but here's the thing. Then don't, then your, then your uh, time frame is too big. Hmm. What's that okay. mean? Okay. Well, what that means is this, to say, all right, I surrender it all to the universe, right? Yeah. Whatever it's going to be. Okay. That's too much, especially yeah. if you don't even know what you're surrendering to. <laughs> That's a good point. Let's get, all right, let's get a grip. Yes. But, but I have a sense that there is a really, there is a power for good. Mm-hmm. And just for this afternoon, I'm going to lean into it and I'm going to get in the back seat and let this power, I'm going to, I'm going to road test it. I'm going to see. Okay. Right. Is there a power of good and is it leading me in a good place? Is it leading me in a good place? Because the idea is, I mean, as far as like defining the power, that's really secondary because because what we're all about are results. Right. See, and if the results are good, I can trust that the power is good. Uh, Okay, got it. So it's almost in, in that particular, if that was your issue, you would say, I'm, I do feel like the universe is a good place, but I want to trust that the wisdom that you give me is good and it's using, it's going to actually have a positive outcome for me. So universe, please give me the eyes to see that this is happening. And that would be the prayer I would give to the Kashuk records? Yes, you could, right. But okay. in, in a smaller time frame. Yeah. Yeah, get in, within the next week, within the next 24 the hours. The week, the week yeah. is too long. Yeah. I mean, if I'm in doubt, a week is 25 lifetimes. Right. If I'm really in distress, I'm going for the next two or three hours. Okay, in the next two or three hours, show me Show that. me. Show okay. me that you're I'm there. I'm looking, me. show me. Yes. yes. Like that. Okay, got it. Okay, so we, we covered incarnation. We've covered um, authority. authority. Tell us about the other ones. Discipline. Discipline. Okay. I love discipline. <laughs> now, I didn't always love discipline, as you yeah. could probably gather. But here's the idea of discipline. Okay, so now I have all this energy, right? Because right? I'm in alignment with authority. So it's yeah. like, great, but here's the idea. Now, I want to make good use of this energy. What yeah. am I going to do? And this is where discipline comes in. Mm-hmm. Discipline is any repeated pattern of thought or behavior that re- basically weaves an energetic structure that supports us so we can accommodate more. Mm-hmm. aliveness mm, okay. all right now it's from the word disciple okay mm-hmm. which is from the word which it's from a word that means to listen to hear mm-hmm. so a dis a, a spiritual discipline is any activity that empowers our ability to hear the inner voice oh so it's not like the discipline like how many times do you work out no it can't be okay it's both so it's both. It's both. Okay. But see, working in the records, then it's like, I mean, we've all had, you know, <laughs> I don't know, lots of, you know, scores of failed attempts at a million things. Okay. There's all this, oh, we, I mean, there are ways we need to eat. There are ways we need to work right. out. All these things, right? But see, any discipline, and so a discipline is the practice itself, right? Mm-hmm. But a discipline is only sustainable if it meets the triangle test. And whatever, all right? So right. now we're getting, okay, so this gets very interesting. Right. So here's what this is. You and I are both very familiar with the connection between the mind and the heart. Mm-hmm. Right? Fabulous. In this new age, we are breaking into a new dimension, and it is the dimension of the will, mm-hmm. the right use of the will. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so for any discipline to be effective, it has to pass the triangle test. So what that means is this. I have to take it to my mind. So let's say, I don't know, you know, there's a... Uh, I actually had a recent I, one. I'll, tell, I'll give you one of my own personal examples. Me. Okay. All right, there's this big project that I feel like Spirit is asking me to do, right? Okay. So so I'm kind of like, really? Prove it to me. Why, why, are you sure you want me to do this? Or did I hear wrong? You know, so then I have like, my mind goes, yes, this makes logical sense, CJ, that 
you're the, the the task at hand is to plan a big event to help people code software code with consciousness. So I'm like, yes, that makes sense. Given my background, logic will make okay. sense. Right. Okay. I'm, I my heart's like, I really want to help people in society, and this is definitely like this makes sense to me. This is a way to help people. This is what I'm here for. And my will's like, mm -mm, nope, not doing it. I'm not doing it. Okay. <laughs> so you got it. Yeah. Okay. So you have two out of three. So what this means is this will not, you're not going to, as is, it won't, you won't see it through. Okay. So what we want to do is take the project and bring it to your will and say, is there any part of this you're willing to do? Ah. Can I get off the couch for any of this? <laughs> Oh, and okay. my, yeah, my will would say, okay, I can, I'll do some of the stuff, but I have okay. to be proof that I'm going to, here's what I heard when I went through my acoustic records. I need proof that something good is going to happen for me. I just feel like I'm a, 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 a slave to society. Okay. Okay. So then here's what we want to do. We want to bring this to the heart. See, the law of projects mm -hmm. is that. If we love the project, we will love the result. If I love the experience, I will love the result. If mm. I dread the experience, I will poison the result. Oh. See, we cannot suffer our way into happiness. Mm. It is, doesn't work. I have mm. tried it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, right? Yeah, we yeah, yeah. It. So what we want to do is take her around with the project so that you love it now. Uh, There's no such thing as I'll love it later. There's yes. no such thing as I'll get a prize later. Yes. It's like the prize has to be in the doing. Otherwise, don't do it. Mm, Otherwise, yes. we're infusing our activities with disdain. Right. And then yes. we wonder why nobody wants what we have. Ah, so it's really it's just this triangle. When we have the triangle and it's in alignment, then probably the discipline comes a lot easier when that happens. Yes. I mean, then discipline is a supportive structure as opposed to a punishment. See, this is what, I mean, let's talk about confusion. Yeah. See, I used to think discipline was punishment. It's not. These are two different things. Punishment, right, is, you know, whatever it is, supposedly a corrective consequence for a certain right. behavior. That's yeah. very different from discipline. Yeah, I'm going to discipline you because you've been a bad girl. You know, go go clean your room, whatever. Right, so these are all, so in this progression, working in my records, what I really was coming, by discipline now, I'm really seeing that if I can grok the spiritual essence of one of these ideas, my entire relationship to it will be mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have three. We've got incarnation, we're here. Authority, we're hooked up to the energy source. Discipline, we've got structures to help us manage the energy. Right. And the next one. Wait, before we go into the next one, I okay. want to just do a little, for people who just tuned in, we're talking okay. to Linda Howe. Discover your soul's path through the Akashic Records, taking your life from ordinary to extraordinary. And so we're talking about the three pillars of light that really support. So your original question was, how can I be the spiritual being living in this in this human world and do what I need to do? And so you got, I need to be okay with my body and be an arcana incarnated with the form that I took today. I have to be... Um, I actually have to be um, disciplined. And then I also have to be, what was the third one? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Authority. We want to keep them in order. Okay. <laughs> First one right. is, is incarnation. Right. We're here. Okay. Second is authority. We're connected right. to the power source. And there's a specific way. Why does it have to be that order? Because I, I got the sense in your book. Because it's a, it's a progression. Ah, uh, okay. See, it's a progression. Okay. So, so here's the thing. If I have all the power in the world, but I am still still rejecting the fact that I even have a body, I can't use the power. Ah, uh, I see, God. So you have to make peace with incarnation. Then okay, you make first. peace with authority. Right. Okay, and then discipline. Okay, okay, now we move on to discipline. my personal favorite, which is responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and I'll tell you why it's my favorite, because it's the one I've had the most trouble with. Me too. Because I'll tell you what. Okay, so there are a couple of things here. First of all is the confusion. Because see, I had this idea that if I were really spiritual, 
I would have no responsibilities to anyone. I would be sitting <laughs> on the lanai drinking iced tea. <laughs> and you could all like bug That's a nice fantasy. It is. I thought, where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> but that's what I thought. I was right. so wrong. Anyway, so here's, okay, so first we get over that. So the, the next step is that, that there's the distinction between true and false responsibilities. Yes. Now, true responsibilities can require effort. They can be a lot of work, mm -hmm. but somehow they bring out the best in us, right? Mm -hmm. Even when we're tired, we can get the job done. Mm -hmm. False responsibilities, okay, are responsibilities that, that diminish us and deplete us, make mm -hmm. us resentful and mm -hmm. mean. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Okay, and mm. that's really when we do for others what they can do for themselves. Ah, yes. Okay, okay. So we make that distinction, then we move on. And the next piece with responsibility is really coming to find out that responsibilities, our true soul level responsibilities, are really, they define the path. They mm. are the crucible within which our personalities are transformed, our human selves. See, because to effectively meet our responsibilities, we have to let go of old ideas, limiting patterns. Sometimes we have to develop our skills. You know, as a parent, listen, do I have a soul level responsibility to my son? Yes. But I have to tell you, there are a lot of parts of parenting I could do without. Yeah. I didn't like, you know, I'm like, I don't really like going to parent-teacher conferences. Yes. I didn't like that. I don't like doing paperwork. A lot of paperwork. Yes. Parent. Right? I mean, all of these things. But you know what? I had to develop my skills, right, to be able to be an effective parent for my mm -hmm. son. So it's a great responsibility. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, the same thing, you know, I, my mother was dying when I was writing this book. And, okay, so the only thing worse than the parent-teacher conference is the, is the meeting at the nursing home. Yes. Yes. I'm like, oh my God. So it's like, well, isn't this fabulous, right? right? So um, so res responsibilities, what we want to look at is, is this, a res is this responsibility an avenue through which I am becoming the best person that I can be? Mm -hmm. Am yeah. I developing, right? Like that. Yes, I get it. Like in parenting, I can say, yep. I mean, it's hard. Some of the pieces aren't great. But I am being, I'm a better person as a result of it. Right. It's like amazing. I mean, parenting has done a wholesale assault on my self-centeredness. I mean, it's <laughs> really, I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. I have yeah. to do nothing. I have to stare for two Yeah, hours. exactly. I mean, it's like, oh my God. Okay. So, so that's, okay. So yeah, we have eight, and we have seven more minutes. I want to hit the, the okay, last one. The next one is commitment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Commitment, okay. Now, this is interesting. Commitment's really fierce, yes. okay? At this point, we have been around these, you know, we've done the, the four others. Right. Commitment is where, it's kind of like we throw the lock on. This is where, you know, while, while responsibility um, carves out the path, mm -hmm. commitment keeps us attached to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's like the lock on the roller coaster mm -hmm. because life gets bumpy, and, and if we're not committed, we're going to be thrown off course. Mm -hmm. And what happens, the power of commitment is this. Once I make a commitment to my path, all the energy embedded in the path can be returned to me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if I want the goodies, the perks, right, the, um, the growth and development of the path, I have to commit first, and then the path gives it to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, when I did this, what was interesting, there was a definitely, when I actually looked at my own Akashic records for this event, like whether I should do this thing or not, the it was interesting because there was a play on responsibility and commitment. And so what was clear to me after I looked at commitment was that my family is my first and foremost commitment in this lifetime. It may have not have been another lifetime, right. but in this lifetime, it's I'm committed to my family. And so 
the responsibility is towards my family too, but the but society is the other thing that I'm committed to actually help grow and expand societal awareness. That's my second one. But my first priority is my family. And that was really illuminating because I, I'm, I'm feeling the struggle between the two and I feel it internally, but I didn't know why. But it was a commitment that I made in this lifetime. So if something is struggling between those two things. Like I have to do all these radio shows and all these things, or I'm doing all these radio shows and that's for society, but it comes at the expense of my family. I'm, I'm not gonna let that happen. It. Yeah, but it helped, that was super edifying to know. Right. It's great, that's Yeah. great. Yes, I mean, that's just how it is. Yeah, but that's, but it was interesting because the responsibility was kind of like, oh, I don't want to do this. But but it's like, but are you committed? Because if you're committed to this, then you need to find out the triangle. What is not happening? Is your mind not clear about what you need to do? Is it your will? That's it's your heart? Or you're not doing heart-centered things? I mean, I think that's brilliant. Okay, now what's one in the center? Grace, tell us that. Okay, Grace is... You know, grace is really, it's at the, it's at the center, right? Mm-hmm. It's the core of our being. It's this infinite. It's that center light that you're telling. It's the center goes. pillar, central pillar of light, okay? It is full of grace. There is nothing we can do about that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is wonderful, right? We are not here to generate it. Right. We are not here to even direct it. You know, the light is a higher intelligence. It knows where it wants to go. So as we make our way around these five pillars, It's like cleaning off the windows and the light of grace shines through us as people out into the world. Mm -hmm. And that's how it goes. And what happens when we've done our, you know, inner house cleaning, what happens then is that the light from the core of our being, as it shines out, there are no obstructions. And so what happens is that we are not misunderstood. People get us. Mm-hmm. You see? They yes. can receive what we're trying to give. And we can receive from others as well. Oh, nice. Yes. Interesting. Because they can sit, right? Because the channel's clear. Right. So another way of looking at this, you say in the book, is when you address those five things. Um, so it's incarnation, um, authority. Maybe. Discipline, responsibility, commitment. In that order, when we make peace with all those things, it's clean. It's letting our inner light shine through. Let's the light shine through. And then you get the goodies. <laughs> and then you get the goodies because here's really how, you know, I, okay, here's the secret to Akashic manifestation. Mm-hmm. Ready? The light is equally radiant and magnetic. So the light, as I'm sitting here and the light is shining through me out into the world, at the same time, the light is drawing to me everything I need. Ah, it's a magnet. I get it's it. It's a magnet. So when oh. they say magnetize, you know, it's not like, I don't have to be like, ah. <laughs> I don't have to make anything come to me. Yeah, please I let me can't. receive. Ah. I can't. That is not how it goes. My job is to clean the windows. Right. So the light can shine out. And the light, so it's already set up. It's all, do you understand? It's already set up. And life will bring, because the truth, and life will bring to me what is mine. Because I don't know about you, but I know I can only be happy with what I want. Mm-hmm. I don't care how nice it is. If I don't want it, I don't want right, it. Right, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, let's actually, in the next cup, one minute or two, <laughs> let's put it all together. Okay, okay. So, so you use, in the very last chapter of your book, you talk about like, okay, so I have an issue. I'm going to bring yeah. it up. Like, give me an example of an issue that someone came up with, and then they said, okay, is it an issue? Okay, so like, oh, I'll use my example so we were consistent. I have an issue. Should I be doing this coding for consciousness workshop or seminar? Okay. So I look and say, am I, so what are the questions that I ask the Akashic okay. Records? So, so we want to start with, see, the, there's no incarnational issue here. Right. I don't see one. Okay. It's like, you got it. You're here and this is available right. and whatever. Okay. So authority, you recognize that there's some flow of authority in life right. and this is being brought to you as an opportunity. Right. Right. Take it or leave it. Right. It's okay. So, so you get that. Right. Okay. Now discipline. Do you have the discipline for this? All right. 
we're going to look what kind of discipline would it involve? What mm -hmm. would you have to actually do? Mm -hmm. This is the point at which we introduce the triangle. And the question would be, how do you feel about this? Mm -hmm. What do you think? You know, if you think something's ridiculous, you are not going to let yourself do it. Right. It's just, yeah. it's not going to be, okay. And then, but ultimately the question is, am I willing to get up and take action? Mm -hmm. That's a powerful question because there are many wonderful ideas, but if I'm not going to get in the car and drive across town, it doesn't matter. Right. So my choice at this point is to modify the idea to meet the triangle or to throw it out and get a new idea. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then I look to responsibility and I ask, where is my responsibility here? Mm -hmm. What is my responsibility? Is my responsibility to mastermind the project and to delegate? Mm -hmm. Is my responsibility to do a certain part of it? Am I, you know, I mean, there are so many responsibility takes so many forms, mm -hmm. right? And we want to, we want to tease that out. Mm -hmm. And then we move to commitment. Right. And the commitment is, am I willing to go the distance with this no matter what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if I am, the universe, the path itself will nurture and sustain me. Mm -hmm. If I'm hedging, like I'm going to see this and see what happens. I'll do this and see what happens. Then what will happen is that the energy will continually drop off. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? I do. That's what so I've been experiencing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it's not sustainable. Uh, so you want to go back to, I would go back to discipline. Right. So I would be asking these questions that you're asking, I would be asking my Akashic records. These Ask questions. them in your records. Okay. You can do this outside of your records, but see, when we work in the records, you want to think it's a it's a beam of light. It emanates from the soul. It connects us to the source, and it holds us steady as we explore the deepest truth of our being. Okay, got it. So this is this is a practical application because it's it's Very this is my practical. thing, but it's like some project, project X, which I'm sure everyone is like, you know, kids soccer league. Should I coach a soccer league? Should I take the job? It's like Everything. Same thing. Everything. Okay. It's, it's all the same. All of our issues, whatever they are, life on the planet, everything starts with our incarnation. Yeah. And proceeds from there. Everywhere we go, we encounter authority. Right. Everywhere we go. See, and that is what is so fascinating about this five-pointed star and the triangle. And the thing that I've learned is that on some issues, I only have a difficulty in one area. Mm-hmm. Okay, in some issue, in some, some situations, I've got a difficulty in every area. Yeah, absolutely. But that's all right. That's all yeah. right. So, so we want to know, I mean, this is not, you know, we're not cookie cut. We're really people. Right, we're yeah. We're fluid and we're evolving. And But every time I go through the process, what happens is there's more, more clarity in the bigger picture. Ah, okay, so we've been talking to Linda Howe, Discover Your Soul's Path Through the Kashuk Records, Taking Your Life from Ordinary to Extraordinary. So if you want to know how to do this, how to go to the Kashuk Records, what questions to ask, um, it's all in it's here. All in the book. It's fantastic. Thank you, Linda, so much. Tell us your website, too. Tell us Thank all your, you. okay, your particulars. All right. um, you can find me at Akashic Studies. Dot com. It's A-K-A-S-H-I-C studies.com. And you can, you know, I have lots of, lots of good stuff there, lots of free stuff. Yeah. We love free stuff. But I do. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of resources there to help you get going on your journey. And, and certainly um, if there's, you know, you know, read the book and, and I know that, and I hope you love it as much as I do. I love it. So, um, so folks, I'm at the Fired Up with CJ. You can find us on Facebook, the www.firedupwithcj.com website. Thank you for listening. Thank you for, for a beautiful piece of work. Thank you. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support, love, and blessings.